G'day. Welcome to Marco Sam After Work. Today I want to do a, well, give an introduction to these components here in front of me. Um, this is from a gentleman called Doug, um, a, a company called Win Zero. Um, and what you're really looking at is a wind flag. Yes, it's a, listen, from what I understand, ultrasonic um, wind meters um, hooked up in a system that transfers information to a, uh, there's, I think you can get three, I've only got two, uh, but these are wind meters um, which send the signal to a receiver um, and then you hook the, your, that links to your device. Um, a tablet is what most people would use, but your phone basically in uh, Android is what I was using. It also works in iOS, so it also works for the Apple side of things. So, you know, all of your tablets and, and the phones and that sort of stuff can do this thing. Um, what it actually does is it uses these devices. Now, from what I understand, this is the normal one. This is one they've been selling, um, and this is a new prototype one. He sent us what he could. It's a fair way to send stuff across the world. Um, and he sent it over us for us to test. So I've got one of each. I think you can, the system is set up to be able to run three in total equally using one works well too. And I'll explain it a bit more. Uh, they are a meter, has a, a thread on the bottom of it. So your normal sort of um, camera threads, so a, a quarter UNC uh, that you can put on top of a tripod or whatever you want to put it on top of. Um, and it's made, it's got no, it's not a wind flag and we're having actually a flag. It has a, 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 a sensor um, and it will tell you, it can tell wherever the wind's coming from. You notice on top, it has a to target, which is for basically you have it pointing in the same direction as where your bullet path would be. So to target, not pointing, looking at it, but to target in that direction. And then it sends a message via the system to your device which has different ways of showing you that. There is simple dials, which have an arrow pointing where the wind's going. Um, then it has other ways of doing things where it actually has the, these little tags, which will tell you the wind correction. I think wind speed and wind correction, and you can have up to three of them, and then an average as well. As you'd imagine, you go into your device, you set up all your, all your parameters, so how much wind affects your, um, rifle at what range, all that sort of stuff, so you can set it all up. So it is designed to be able to use in the likes of a shoot where it'll just tell you your correction, um, so you know where what your correction is, so you can adjust that, or you can show all that other information. For me, I wanted to test the system, so I wanted to compare it. I've only got it across a little while ago, a little while ago but I wanted to sort of the um, show everyone so people get the information as, rapid, as soon as they can. I will probably use this and do some more verifying over the next while um, and tell you if I've got more to tell you, then I'll let you know. But uh, listen, what I've seen, it's it's a good system and I'm very happy, but let go and explain what I actually saw. Um, to start off with the simple side of things is that in putting a flag out there, um, you of reading the flag and learning to read your wind or just learn to read your wind. I, I'm, I'm talking about a flag, that's what I'm comparing with. But equally, if you're just trying to see your trees and understand what your wind's doing at your target area, you're looking at that, trying to work out that. Um, then for hunters and that sort of stuff, you want to be learning what all the grass is doing, and what all the trees are doing, and what the sky makes sense of that, and try and make sense of those things. And you're trying to learn, and what actually is it? You don't really know until you see what happened with that shot. Um, for the way I do a lot of the stuff, and for the best training I can come up with is to have at least a flag at target. Um, and then obviously you go right to the level of where you have some of the competitions where they'll have 25 flags down the side of the range. A um, little bit different than the LR side of things and I'll go through that in a minute. But in all those different ways, what we're doing is trying to make sure that we get that shot to be as close as it can be by having read the wind. By having a device like this, which doesn't just tell us what a flag does, which a flag you can sort of see the sideways value where it actually is how much is blowing out. And with a, with a sock like we use, then you can see the mouth of the sock so you can work out a little bit your forward and back. But largely, I do a, well, largely the way I read wind is through a monstrous amount of trial and error, a monstrous amount of experience, knowing my area, knowing my conditions and that side of things. 
So for most people, even most people that get to shoot fairly regularly there, they don't have those runs on the board in the wind. So actually learning how to read it is quite complicated. When you've got a system that is actually telling you exactly the angle where that wind coming from and what that speed is at target, you can obviously compare with the wind you're sitting in, whatever that is, and you have a whole heap more information. If you can have another one or two, so you end up with three systems where you can do that sort of comparison, then you've got another whole you know, leg in the game. Um, and by this sort of system, depending on how you're using this process, where you're using an average worked out fret or just looking at the dials and making sense of things, um, or you're just out there to actually go through and compare things. Just go out on, a, on any given day where you don't need to shoot into a local area and set things up and do some analyzing. Look at what it's saying, look at what the trees are saying and use it simply as a learning tool. This system really does give you that. Um, I tested it in, well, I set up a situation which is very f sort of familiar, not familiar. 3,000 yards is something we do a lot. The wind was pretty peculiar on that day. It was, and it was in the middle of the day. We don't normally go out in the middle of the day. We need different light for that side of things. But I wanted to highlight the situation as to um, the type of wind we had through there. So we had some decent wind to be able to go through and measure things and compare things with. Um, I used the little flag rather than the windsock so to really highlight that side of things. I got another thing out of that day is that it, the mirage was, was heavy the, so the vision isn't good from your camera, from our, from our, our long range vision wasn't awesome. Um, the camera was a little worse than sand spotting scope but still not great wind and yet uh, this thing it's 3,000 yards, so it worked to that without a glitch whatsoever. So I suspect more than two miles is sort of capabilities of the transmission of it. But we got precise readings. I also got to compare it. I had a GoPro set up there to actually watch what was actually happening, compare between the flag and the readings and that sort of stuff. And that was spot on as well. So worked well on that score. I'd give you both in transmission and in reading the wind, it worked really well. But it also highlighted the situation of actually being able to when you haven't got other information, this thing was really telling you something. Um, and I suppose then I'd go into the next bit. The real bit of uh, that this gave me the advantage of, which I've never been on a measure before, and that is, well, to start off with, on long range shots and especially extreme long range shots, the ground wind has only a little tiny bit to do with it. So your stuff up to sort of 15 feet, 20 feet in the air, has little to do with it. I should say it probably changes everything from, from ground all the way up to 20 feet in the air is changing all the time. Gradually going from ground wind to your, to your mid-range wind or your, your sort of, and then I won't get into the measurements type thing. I went up to, and I should say, I put one under drone. I went up to as much as 120 meters in the air. I found the from really, 20 meters in the air to 120 meters in the air, there wasn't a lot of difference in the zones I was testing with. Um, there would have been if I'd gone further, but that wasn't what I was doing. I wasn't trying to trying to uh, evaluate the what plane's flying. But definitely saw a difference, and this is the first time I've been able to do it. And actually verify it. Now I've verified it with lots of shots downrange and know roughly what I'm gonna get into. But to go out and actually set this up and actually go and verify it was really interesting and really valuable to do that side of things. And for someone that doesn't have those runs on the board to be able to go and understand what your shot's going through, um, ah, listen, not everyone's got a drone, I get it, but it's equally something that was a worthwhile test and who knows where that goes in the future for everybody. Um, but that's what I did. I basically built up a little bracket, stuck it on top of a drone um, and tested both in the, from the ground area alongside a flag so I could have, one, have another one of these sitting there, measure the two and a flag so I could see all, it's all, all three working all exactly the same and then gradually went up and saw that wind really change. I also went right the way down from something that was six foot in the air and saw that wind change there. So very much a, on that score, a real learning tool um, for, for people who be that for something like clubs or for trainers and things to go through and actually show this sort of stuff as to what's really going on with the wind. And of course, always in reference to what you can see. It's good to learn this sort of stuff, being able to use it. And of course, you, you can't go, if you've got a long range shot um, that you want to take for whatever reason, 
You can't just go flying drones around in most situations to find out what's going on or go out and set up wind meters next to your, your, your hunt side of things in the way if you've got a deer that, that is all of a sudden there, you can't ask him to sit still while you go and get a wind reading. Um, but to actually go out and use these things, and that's probably one of the places I see a lot of people really being able to use this sort of system, and that is in not shooting, um, in just learning and just, okay, you're, it's not able to shoot at this time, I'll go out and set up some wind readings, some wind meters and do some learning, just some looking. Um, whether that's through the rifle scope or that's through a spotting scope or that's just through your eyeballs, but watching the trees and seeing what that really is and getting a real reading. It's one thing and it's a great thing and probably the best thing to fire shots off and see what actually happens and watch your dust and make that sort of stuff. But it's not everyone can do that. You're not in this position to be able to do that and you've, that's ammunition wasted in learning and that sort of stuff. To do it where you've got a system that's actually reading, you've got to set it up, you can see the wind, you can do that sort of stuff and verify and learn that way. I think it's going to be a very fast training tool or a very valuable training tool. Um, I mentioned that they have three of them. I only had the two here. I think this is um, the, the original one and this is the, the prototype one. Um, both worked exactly the same. Um, this one's a little bit smaller, tiny bit heavier. Uh, it's a little larger and a tiny bit, um, a, a, a tiny bit lighter. Um, so I think they just made out slightly different stuff, but both work very well. Um, and the, I suppose I'd say in, in using them, pretty simple. They've got little charge ports on the side, so little um, USB-C, I think it is, charge ports. Um, just an on button um, and they flash. And if it's um, then it's trying to talk to this thing, turn this thing on. And you'll see there's a little screen here that tells you bits and pieces. I haven't done much reading the screen. I just linked it up to the tablet. I was using a, um, a Samsung tablet and yeah, that's flashing away. So yeah, that, that means it's talking to it. And this one, they'll do the same when you do the same sort of thing. I won't annoy distract you with any more of the flashing. So yeah, it worked very, very, very consistently, very well, very happy with the whole process. Just turn that off. Yep. Um, and I was, listen, very impressed with it. Um, I think uh, the, whether this turns into something that you end up with three of these or 12 of these down the side of a range for some of your fly, fly shoots and that type of thing, I can imagine people really geeking out on this sort of thing and really getting into it. But uh, my main thoughts on it would be the training side of it is how capable it is and maybe to help with for the ELR side of things. Yes, there's all the bits and pieces of understanding the wind in between, but maybe there's something that the day before the range for people that aren't familiar there with the area to go and look at what's happening with that sort of stuff. Or maybe there's recorded data for people to look at as to, you know, this is sort of the general day and da 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 da. I would think you would need to look at what the sky and the, and the trees and everything look like to verify with this sort of wind. But it is a real way to get readings. Um, whether you're using a drone or just a, a tripod and a pole and that sort of stuff, but a real way to actually see what that wind is actually doing. That, that invisible stuff that's our main, our main um, protagonist or whatever, or whatever that word is, <laughs> our main problem that we deal with all the time. Anyway, that's about what I can tell you. Um, uh, thank you very much, Doug, for sending it across to us. I was very happy with, um, to have a look at it. I, um, Hope to be able to use it a fair bit more and make sense of things a bit more and maybe even construct some videos about training that sort of stuff in the way of showing what wind is actually doing um, and maybe some more stuff to do with training. But my real thoughts would be the, the hands-on people. So maybe it's a thing for clubs to get to help with that sort of stuff or groups to get to be able to help people learn this sort of stuff because it is, it is our nemesis, the wind, and this is a, a really smart way of being able to read it and learn about it. Anyway guys, thank you very much for checking in. I hope you liked the video. Um, we'll catch you next time.